I was thinking about how often I've heard about gay people being bashed, which still unfortunately happens once in a while. And who has carried out the bashing? And it... I can't even recall a single time of reading of, at least in the past ten years, uh, of gay people being bashed by those that are part of urban culture. I hear about phrases being said to gay people. I read about threatening tones, threatening postures. I hear about threats. But actual gay bashing? No. And then I started looking back at, in, in my memories, reevaluating my memories, reevaluating my experiences. And it's all been talk. Now, that doesn't make a negative attitude towards gay people a good thing. But it's certainly not the same kind of thing that I should actually be, you know, terrified of people over. You know? And yet yeah, it can be difficult to tell who is, let's say, in a gang and who is not. And even the definition of gang is kind of iffy. But I was also thinking about how, you know, I've talked about how, let's say Chick-fil-A, how I don't understand the whole thing on <clears throat> wanting to boycott a company because the owners don't have favorable opinions of gay people. Now, to me, it sh to me, it should be about whether or not a company's actual policies are anti-gay. If they're not, then what difference does it make what the, own, what the owners feel about really any subject? <clears throat> you know, someone's personal opinions and personal life should be separate from their business. That's how I feel about it. So, and the same thing should be, you know, I, I, I've, I've now applied that same thing to uh, what people believe and what people do. You know, during those times that I had, uh, I think I'm repeating myself now, but I've made three other versions of this video. Um, during those times that I had been, I had thought that my life was in danger, it really may not have been. It may have just been them trying to make me feel uncomfortable. The people I would really have to worry about are the ones who... are the ones who don't say anything, but might carry out an action, like... Uh, some, you know, neo-Nazis or something some bigoted white supremacists who have a very, very negative attitude towards gay people to the point where it's hatred towards gay people, not just making offhanded comments, but people who have an actual hatred. That's what would be a little more rational and logical to, to have a bit of worry about. Um, so... And even that, and even that, I mean, people could get jump on me for that. Well, you know, you never know with that either. Oh, you don't. 
you don't. I have a friend who um, has been out of the closet gay almost as long as I have. We uh, we met when we were teenagers. We went to a place called uh, uh, Oasis. It was a gay and lesbian uh, youth center. And uh, he has a giant tattoo on his back that says skinhead pride and he never really fully went into the closet or anything it's just that was that was the tribe that he later belonged to so maybe he did I'm, 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 I, that was an assumption saying that he never fully went into the closet maybe he did because he doesn't live in the same state, and so I wasn't really able to be around him to see how he was during the period when he got that tattoo, so. But it is easy to judge a book by its cover, and it's... And, you know, every so often the cover will actually represent what the book is, but, uh... It doesn't necessarily represent it, so... I appreciate... having talked about this stuff. I also appreciate that I was able to talk about it on Vimeo without worries of the comment thread being filled with uh, faggot this, faggot that, uh, blah blah blah, you know. I appreciated that. I'm not really sure what more to say now, but just that I was, I was wrong. I did not, I was having fears that were based on experiences that I was looking at in a way that may not have been representing reality. I had the experiences I had, but how I viewed those experiences was very biased. Um, so, anyway. <laughs>